So I direct your attention to line 89 of the Etherpad, MozFest update. Michelle Thorne, is it true that we are almost full? The rumor moves, does not lie. Um, a big thanks to everyone who's really helped us with the, the push for outreach. We are so almost full. We have 100 tickets remaining for MozFest. So there's even a little example tweet if you wanted to share it with people who really want to come but just haven't gotten their ticket yet. Um, it's on line 102. So please spread the word and we can get those last few tickets out. And if you need something to um, entice them, I wanted to dedicate some part of this update to tell you about some of the fun, not quite session things that we're doing at MozFest that you can look forward to. Um, one thing is, thanks to Chloe, a round of turtle wushu. For those of you not yet familiar, MozFest will show you what it's all about, but suffice it to say it involves little plastic turtles and a whole lot of ninja skills. Um, there's also going to be a game of werewolf. We ha even have a walking, talking werewolf API, human API, werewolf slash human, who knows. Um, and there's uh, also another rumor that we'll have some karaoke. And a peer challenge to anyone who is interested in this. If we want to make popcorn meets karaoke, what would that look like? And could we have it coded by the 9th of November? It's an open challenge. We'll have karaoke no matter what. But if someone is interested in that, we, we welcome all sorts of ideas. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the fun update. But what we, what we wanted to also take the time on this call is um, just to have people um, drop in any questions that they've got about MOSFET. So starting on line, um, now line 114, if you've got questions, things that you want to know or unsure about, please add them there and I will start going through them and answering them. Um, so, how have we identified skill gaps and are there areas where we still need stuff? So we just sent out a round of um, outreach emails asking for particular kinds of skills like responsive, like responsive um, web designers or community builders and this sort of thing. And people have actually come back and said, um, yes, yes, I have those skills. Tell me where I should plug in. Um, and I've sent them links to kind of relevant sessions um, so people are helping get, um, get plugged in. And um, someone adding the good point that we also need to push on teachers and youth. Yes, we have a huge, we actually do have a gap on youth. It only costs three pounds for a young person to come. So um, if you know of smart kids who can be there in London and participate, that's also a good thing to help um, push for. Um, what happens when we're full? Um, we are so close to being full that it's a very valid question. We are going to still sell some tickets at the door, so it's not the last, last chance for people to get tickets. But um, we won't have um, any more available online. Um, so that's what happens when we reach our magic number. It's basically we just can't feed everyone or provide enough sessions that don't get overcrowded once we go over about um, 850 people in the building. Um, there's a lot of notes here. Can people buy tickets at the door? Um, actually, yes, we still are going to sell tickets at the door. Um, will sessions be recorded? Most of them will not be video recorded. Actually, 99% of the sessions will not be video recorded, but we are having a videographer who is going to um, do interviews and some video highlights. Plus, we're also going to do a much better job at capturing the assets and notes and things that come out of the session. Um, and then there will be parts of the program, like the keynotes, that we will record, and we're still working on exactly what, if there's going to be some streaming opportunities available. Coffee guys will be there. Yes, yes, yes. There's even going to be three coffee places, not even, not just two. And rumor has it there will be a popcorn machine. Um, is there a way to get additional tickets once the remaining tickets are sold out? Um, you can buy tickets at the door once we're sold out, but we're not yet sold out. Is there a draft schedule somewhere? MozillaFestival.org slash schedule is the closest you'll get until we're closer to MozFest. When will the schedule be created? We will not have a final schedule till the day of, but we'll have versions of it that we'll start to share 
um, as pieces get closer and closer. Our whole philosophy around the doing this is that we want to collect all the session data, all the program data, and then start putting it into um, rooms and times. And this allows the maximum flexibility while creating a good flow between sessions. And people just get fixated. If you say your thing's on at 3, then they will always think it's on at 3. And then you know, if it changes, then the whole world breaks. So we're trying to get all the session data before we publish the schedule. Um, we can we reserve certain times? If you have a, a preference for your session, please let me know. Um, I'm trying to accommodate. Some people say they can only do Saturday or want to go after this or whatever. Um, just let me know. Um, do we mind the kids in the UK that have been at our events? I don't really know the latest answer on that. Maybe some others can help me with that. I think no, not systematically. Um, I will attend bar camp this week. Is there a way to reserve five tickets for the next two weeks? Um, who wrote that? Maybe you can just email me and we can talk. Henrik. Let's talk via, via email. Cool. Um, keep, out, keep putting stuff in there via, um, via the etherpad, and I'll write back on text. But I will now hand the mic over to Mark for a pep talk. Hello. It's not really a pep talk. It's like they're going to depress you all. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, just kidding. Pep talk is a, even though it's a word that comes out of my mouth, I don't expect people to ever repeat it. Um, so yeah, I did want to say a huge thank you to Michelle, but just to everybody. Uh, I guess probably three weeks ago or so, I came on uh, flagging the importance of everybody pitching in on recruiting and everybody uh, pitching in on the program and program descriptions. And really, uh, all of that is top notch at this point. So we're, we're, we've got the people we want, with some exceptions of, of just kind of particular skills. We've got the numbers we want. Uh, and the, the stuff that's up there written uh, in the schedule, or written as session descriptions, as well as the stuff that is on the, on the site more broadly, is much, much better. And really, that's been a huge team effort. So thank you to everybody. And I guess a special shout out to Rebecca uh, and Matt, who really have, have stepped up uh, and backed Michelle in terms of turning some of that stuff around. So um, good work on all of that stuff. I think we're in awesome shape, uh, even if we just landed at the, at the festival today. Two things that I just want to encourage people to think about as we go through the last three weeks. Um, one is really thinking about, and think about this in your own, around your own work there, uh, but also overall, really thinking about how all the pieces fit into the over web, overall webmaker narrative. So you know, as we talk about, for those people who were in the, the Toronto meeting, this really is meant to be a kind of a, a mosaic that when it all snaps together, um, you see how the idea of making freedom of the web or the idea of making in general feeds into this idea of skills, feeds into this idea of re learning, feeds into the general push and ethos we have with web making. And I would say if I have one worry right now, it is that we come across as kind of too scattered and a bunch of tiles on the floor as opposed to that, all those tiles fitting together into a, to a mosaic. And I, I would say the degree to which we can take those tiles and tell the web maker narrative and tell where we're going is actually one of the primary things that we'll end up judging ourselves and to the degree we have board members there will be judged on. So I think it is among, you know, important on all of us that this stuff snaps together and tells a story. Um, and I, I think in particular, because Mozilla Festival is traditionally, or traditionally for two years, been the thing that sets the tone for the next year, if we don't come out with a, a clear narrative on how all these pieces or how 60 or 80% of the pieces that we bring there go into the next year and to further focusing WebMaker, um, you know, people will kind of raise their eyebrows and, and start asking questions about that. So all of us really focusing on that WebMaker narrative is one piece I would just really think about a lot as you do anything related to the festival over the next three weeks and as you're there. Um, the related thing is we've got really good progress on having solid concrete outcomes for, in, for individual sessions. What we haven't actually, Michelle and I just realized this uh, earlier this week, um, 
done is gone and say, for those key tracks, what are those outcomes? And that's really critical to the teeing up next year and to the webmaker narrative thing. Like, what do we actually hope happens if webmaking for mobile is successful, or if hackable games is successful, or if the Hacktivate Learning Instructor Zone is successful? So if you own any of those tracks, or think you do, um, reach out to Michelle, or Michelle will reach out to you. And one of the, the other things we want to get done in the next three weeks in service of that Webmaker Narrative goal, in service of next year planning, is to identify some key outcomes we want at the track level for each of those things, especially around the core ones that relate to, to our strategy. So those are the two things I just wanted to, to say. Great work on, on messaging, recruiting, the story sessions. Focus on the Webmaker Narrative. Focus on track level outcomes for the next couple of weeks. And then the, the last thing I would say um, is uh, if there are uh, people are already putting stuff up there that I'm going to try to read, uh, but if there are places you are unclear or panicked about what you particularly as an individual are going to do there, um, that should worry you or should, and worries me. Um, and in particular, uh, I think there's probably some people who feel like, wow, I'm doing too much. It's still, there's still a chance to fix that. Um, as Michelle says, not everything is locked in the schedule. So I would say if you don't know what you're trying to get out of it or what you're on deck to do, talk to your manager or talk to Michelle in the next 48 hours, uh, and we can sort it. Like we're not, you know, now is the time if you feel panicked that we can easily fix it, uh, and we just want to make sure that everybody feels good about what they're doing, clear about what they're doing. So if you don't feel good about that or don't feel clear or do feel panicked, um, don't worry. Just talk to your manager, talk to Michelle, we'll sort it, um, because all of this is still sortable. So let me just see, Matt, you've got, leave that on there. So mm -hmm. the moments where we had to talk publicly, da 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 we all agreed that we could have used time to practice our pitches. So yeah, but it, in terms of especially talking in front of the media, Ryan is working with Barbara and Michelle on a PR strategy. If there are people who we know we're going to use explicitly in those press conferences with the media, um, we'll, we'll let you know in advance and we will work with you on your pitches. Um, I guess that there also is real-time stuff. Uh, and if you think you're going to be somebody who uh, will get called to do real-time stuff, meaning like come up on stage and host a demo or do a demo and you're worried about it, um, reach out to Ryan or I and we can kind of talk you through it or just know that we want to put you up there with a buddy. Because um, I think that's the easiest thing to do is if you if you're doing something cool, which almost everybody on this call, in fact, I would say everybody on this call is, uh, there is a chance that you'll get called up on stage to demo something uh, or in front of a press. And an easy thing if you're nervous about that, and if we haven't had a chance to practice the pitch, is we'll just put you with a, a buddy. Um, so do 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 do. Part of uh, having all pieces together, identifying the pieces that are missing, what webmaker things are not being addressed. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I can go back through and, and look and feel about that. I, I generally think that most stuff is in there. Uh, I think there is some stuff around the core symbol pieces that's not, you, and a few other pieces that you don't see written in the schedule yet, but that stuff is in spreadsheets and is, um, is getting up there. But if, I, I guess I would throw that back out to the group. If people see stuff missing, um, now is the time to flag it with Michelle or, or even with me. But that's, that, if there's one thing I'm paying attention to, it is the sort of what are all the pieces that are telling the narrative. And, and there's not that much I see that's missing at the program level. Um, if I actually look in the kind of back of them, I'll let spreadsheet version of the program. Um, my biggest worry, I would say, is really if we're going to push on instructors and teachers as a major community next year, really making sure that all of us um, focus on helping that instructor zone to activate zone succeed and making sure we get youth and instructors uh, to the event. I think that's probably one thing I'm probably most worried about, but it's, it's people uh, as opposed to program design. Uh, does the narrative equal webmaker.org? Uh, one day webmaker.org will be a big part of the narrative, but I, I think the narrative is broader than webmaker.org, and probably that's too philosophical of a discussion to have uh, on this call. But I think that you know, the narrative is the program that we're designing. 
um, you know, building a generation of web makers are moving 10 million of people to being producers, and it is then, you know, people who make tools, including our tools, people who make content, and a global communi community of people who are moving in that direction. Anything that hits any of those three notes, I think uh, it fits in the narrative. Any other questions for Mark? I think we've covered the rest of what's on the pad. All right, cool. It is coming together. We are almost there. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everybody. Very cool. Um, and under line 188, there's some suggested topics for discussion around MozFest next week. Uh, we're going to see if we can invite MRZ to, to come and talk about what Air Mozilla is going to be doing at MozFest and make that a broader conversation around how people participate in MozFest online. Um, so if folks have other ideas for topics around MozFest they want to discuss next week, you can just add them under line uh, 180. And let me say one more thing, Matt. Yeah. Uh, and that, just actually one last thing that I want to say, just thinking about the next week or two that Matt reminded me of. Um, as a few people know, but probably not quite enough, there have been weekly MozFest calls that Michelle convenes. Um, they tend to be very much the kind of operational folks uh, or people who are doing program stuff but kind of quite on the ground. Um, there, there's probably a need to make those calls longer, you know, make them an hour. Um, they happen just before this call and bring in some of the people who have key program components or, or are running some of those tracks who really Michelle has been one on one with up until now. Uh, so don't be surprised and do feel compelled uh, if Michelle reaches out and says, hey, you're running a track, we really need you to come on these calls for the next three weeks. Because um, we, uh, probably there is a, some gap between the operational and kind of program leadership piece of this that is fine up to now. We've got all the pieces, but I think just we're going to need to be in tight coordination for the next three weeks. So, um, you know, expect, say, if you're Chris or Laura or somebody running the Hacktivate uh, piece that you'll get a one of you'll get tapped to get on that call or similar for probably Dan on the new stuff. Um, so that's one last bit. Cool. And Michelle has added all the dial-in details for that call under line 194. Yeah. Although I would say don't go to it unless you're asked because if that call becomes 40 people, it'll become useless. Cool. Well, let's push ahead to line uh, 211. Uh, Michelle Levesque, next steps for webmaker.org slash participation. Awesome. Um, so as most of you remember at the All Hands, we all agreed that uh, participation and getting folks involved was super important, and then kind of got a little bit distracted with the uh, MozFest coming up. And so I've been chatting with a whole bunch of folks and put together the Etherpad that you can see online, well, now 215 and rapidly moving downwards, um, which is a list of various teams' end of year participation goals. So these are things that the teams were already sort of planning on doing by the end of the year that revolve around participation. And clearly it's not everybody um, on there. So if there's there's that you have in mind that I haven't got on the pad yet, please do edit it, put your goals on there. Really the purpose of this pad is to try to give us a sense now, a couple months before the end of the year, where we sort of are thinking that we're going to be realistically at the end of the year. Because remember that when we come back from MozFest, it's American Thanksgiving, it's the winter holidays, there's not a lot of time there, but there's still a lot of things that we want to get done. And so making sure that those things don't actually fall on the floor and we have a reasonable idea of what it's going to look like out of the gate in terms of um, in 2013 in terms of participation. And one of the big things on there was we wanted to have this slash participate page. And folks have been asking, you know, hey, where can I find out how I can participate? Where can I find out? Where can I find out? So we decided at the all hands that um, a bunch of us decided we were going to make a sort of temporary page for MozFest. Um, and on line 221, you can see that uh, Matt has actually put together a page. And that page links through to a bunch of wiki pages where anybody can go click uh, edit 
add things to. So I've got some examples on line 224 of things that we've been adding to this, these wiki pages. So stuff like um, Chris McAvoy's where to file a bug, or when the popcorn team says, hey, we've got some QA asks, can somebody help? Things like that, we've been trying to add to these wiki pages. So even though this is very a sort of very rough first pass, at least at MozFest, We'll be able to hand this URL to people, and they'll be able to, you know, when they come out of MozFest and they're super enthusiastic and they're like, "Oh my God, I need to get involved. How do I get involved?" We can have something to point them to. So the other part of this is um, on line 232, which is okay. So this is our sort of temporary version 0.1 for MozFest. What do we want version 1.0 to look like? What are some examples that, that we've seen that we love? You know, somebody's already mentioned how does this relate to the other Mozilla Get Involved style contributor pages? Um, and what should the next steps be to actually get us from this current sort of messy wiki based system into something that we're proud of and something that really focuses on the people who are interested and letting them find the tasks that they might be interested in participating in? So I'm going to leave that as a sort of open question. If, if folks want to add to you know, some examples that they love of, of Get Involved style pages out there, or thoughts about the next couple steps in terms of turning this into a real grown-up style page. Thanks, Michelle. So maybe we'll just invite people to put questions under line 243. Um, I think you got one there already. Hey, Michelle? Yep. Yeah. So on, on line 244, there's a question, how does this relate? I think you kind of touched on this, but oh. how does this relate to other Mozilla Get Involved yeah. pages? Um, I think that you know, in its current form, the, 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 the purpose of, of this page, the, the open mat slash participate page, is that it's all just Mozilla Foundation webmaker-y type um, stuff. So it's all of our projects and things. Um, I think it's a valid question to ask, you know, in the future, do, which of these things belong in the bigger Mozilla Get Involved ecosystem and where can we sort of put that stuff out? But for right now what we're kind of thinking is in terms of if I want to get involved in the webmaker mission and that's not just coding, that's, you know, whatever skills I can bring to the table, how can I get involved? Cool. So do folks have other questions for Michelle? You can either add them to the pad under 247. Um, I mean, I guess one, one question that came up the other day, Michelle, is, is so Webmaker is listed on the Mozilla.org slash contribute page. Yep. Um, there's a link in 245. It's at the bottom of the list uh, under education. Mm -hmm. So I guess one question is, are there any tweaks that we want to make to how we're already appearing on that page? That's uh, a valid question. I turn back to the rest of the group. The other thing um, is, like I said, the, the participate end of year 2012 goals, if you know, your team or you personally are not currently represented on there and you want to make sure that your end of year goals get on there, um, either during the rest of the meeting or after the call, um, send me an email or just stick them up on there. I think Laura has her hand up. Go ahead, Laura. Star seven to unmute. She just wanted to put her hand in the air. Yeah, double mute. Sorry. Um, I was just going to answer your question, Matt. Um, this is just my opinion, but I think that that first sentence on the um, contribute page needs some tweaking, specifically the second part where it says by teaching others how to code and how the web, web works. That feels um, a little bit too limited in terms of what we're trying to do with the web literacy. Um, and so I would just, I would just say that we should uh, try and edit that and make it a little bit more expansive. That was it. Cool. So you, just, you mean specifically just kind of tweaking the copy a bit? Yes. 
Um, cool. Well, if you have specific ideas, um, then why don't you just go ahead and add them under 250, and we can file a bug. Will do. Cool. So, Michelle, just before we move ahead, what concretely do we need folks on, on this call to, to do next in terms of fleshing out the sort of back of the mullet for their participation stuff? Yeah. So one thing that's probably worth thinking about for five minutes for everybody on the call is when you're at MozFest, if you were to meet somebody who was enthusiastic about what you're working on and asked you, hey, how can I get involved? And, you know, there's always that awkward thing where you're like, oh, well, there's this sort of etherpad somewhere, let me get that URL. Um, mentally collect all those, the etherpads that are somewhere where the URL might be, and help us put them onto the wiki pages so that you can just point people concretely to the one spot and they can find what they're looking for through there. So there's a lot of ways that people can get involved that are currently kind of hanging in the ether. And if we can collect them and put them all in a single location, it'll help us find people who are enthusiastic and um, turn them into participants, which would be awesome. Cool. And, and should they add those links and documentation like directly to the, the wiki? Pages yeah, to the started? wiki is what makes sense, I think, at this point. Okay. So maybe we, would you be okay, Michelle, just adding those wiki wiki links to underline uh, 256, just so folks yeah, know where? Yeah, sure. To awesome. Cool. And and just to, I think your your point, Michelle, um, about using this as an opportunity for all of us to have in our heads some clear answers when people walk up to to us at the festival and say, "How can I get involved?" is a really really critical one. And so I I think if we can all or anybody who owns participation ask for the end of the year, get your stuff in there well before the festival, like really in the next week. Uh, and if we can maybe one time before the festival uh, have this as a recurring agenda item or as a, a returning agenda item so um, we can actually share what some of those answers are so we're all really well prepped with the answers of, to the question, how do I get involved when we get to the festival. Is that okay, Michelle? Can you come back? Absolutely. And yep. Encore performance. Let's do it. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Next up, underline 277, Dan and Aaron. Rumor has it that Source has launched. Is it true? It is true. With five minutes before uh, the call. Like uh, what, before I'm now speaking, uh, we have launched. Uh, Source is uh, good to go. We had a couple of server hiccups today, but thanks to the uh, the the amazingness that is Ross, uh, we are through that. And uh, Source, the project that uh, the Open News team has been working for uh, quite some time, is officially launched. Uh, the link is. Uh, right there somewhere in the etherpad. I need to actually get the etherpad up. Uh, uh, there, line 280. Line 280. Thank you. Uh, Source.mozillaopennews.org. Um, this is really exciting. Source is a site about, uh, th that connects the lines between the code being written in journalism and the community that's writing it. Um, we have uh, gone, to, gone to great lengths to actually create a site from the ground up that has uh, data models uh, for code and people uh, right alongside each other. So we're able to uh, really kind of bake community into the, to the very cent uh, center of all of this. Um, what we're really hoping to be able to do right now, um, there's an incredible amount of, 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 uh, of, of, of exciting stuff happening in the journalism space uh, in terms of code, but it's often happening in the uh, in the margins and in the periphery, and uh, Source is able to be a, a center point to pull all of that stuff together. Um, Aaron Kassane, who I believe is on the call, is our uh, editor of Source. And I'm wondering, Aaron, if you could just talk a little bit about uh, the content strategy of Source. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sort of uh, checking the server as I speak. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, we can. Okay, awesome. That means I successfully unmuted. Um, yeah, we are. We launched today with a couple of interviews from journalist coders and also 
um, the announcement of ProPublica's API for one of their crowdsourced tools that's been getting a lot of attention. Um, this is the kind of thing that you can expect to see. We're going to have a lot of content from the makers themselves, whether it's project breakdowns, walkthroughs, tutorials about their files, also uh, interviews with them about the context, um, the specifics of how they developed and frequently how they collaborated across organizations to execute these projects. So there will be those things. Um, we're also doing a regular weekly roundup of what's happening in news development, so all the code that's been released, um, the events that are happening, uh, all of that stuff, including the report backs from hack days that are related to this, which often get relegated to blog posts and ether pads that aren't really connected together. So we're trying to do sort of a digest job as well. And then of course the, the code entries themselves, these are the links to projects that live mostly on GitHub. Um, those are interlinked with our feature articles. So if you go now on the site and see, um, for instance, the Jessica Lord conversation about sheetc.js, that's actually linked to the code entry in our code database, which has, you know, it's pulling from the repo and um, anything we write about Jessica's work will automatically link back to that code entry, which is true for everything that we're entering in. And we're getting a lot of submissions from newsrooms around the world who are sending us their projects to put into the code database so that ideally whenever you go onto this site and you want to see news or journalism related code that's about elections or that's written in Ruby or any of those things, you'll be able to see all the code entries. And then if you want to, you can also go into the tutorials and features that we're working on. Dan, did I miss anything? <laughs> I uh, know. I think I think you hit all of it. I just um, I, I just uh, added into the Etherpad on line 284. Um, we are of course looking for uh, submissions of of both articles about code and um, the code itself to go into our uh, to go into the code index. Um, and so I put in a link to uh, the contribute page. Um, okay. So that we can uh, we can get that stuff there. Um, yeah, I think that that Aaron really uh, hit hit the nail on the head. Um, I don't know if Ryan Pitts is on the call or if he's babysitting uh, servers right now, uh, but Ryan is the uh, developer that that really built out Source, and I think it's it's really worth calling him out on uh, launch day as someone that uh, really made this thing happen. Uh, not only is he an incredibly talented developer, he's actually a developer from the community that Source was built for. He's, a, uh, he's uh, the developer at the uh, Washington State uh, Spokesman Review, Spokane Washington Spokesman Review uh, newspaper. And so uh, one of the things that was incredibly vital uh, for his contribution was he was really able to give us uh, real user insights because uh, this site at its core is really built for uh, exactly people like Ryan, people that are writing this kind of code and, and building it from the start. I think had we uh, just hired a, a developer from somewhere else, uh, Source wouldn't have, have come, as, uh, come as really kind of built around this community as, as it is. So uh, big, big ups to Ryan uh, and also to, to Ross who has guided us through uh, all kinds of server stuff up to and including even right, uh, right now. So uh, thanks to, to Ross and thanks to Erica uh, from the Open News team for really getting uh, some great content in and helping to, to ring bells when bells need to be right, rung. So uh, this has really been a, a team effort. Um, I'm uh, going to jump down to uh, questions here. Uh, it looks like um, there's a, a request uh, for us actually. If we have tweets, status updates around this from Mozilla social media channels, please add them to the calendar here. Uh, we can do that. And Erica, if you're on the call, I'll task you with, uh, with, with making sure that happens. Uh, Erica is already tweeting on the Open News, uh, Open News uh, Twitter account. We also have at source is the official source Twitter account uh, and might also be the most badass Twitter uh, ID ever. Um, and, uh, so questions. Uh, can I talk through this ground rules piece? Uh, I think, Aaron, you can also talk through uh, this with me. Uh, so this is actually, uh, uh, there's a link to a JPEG uh, on line 299, and this came from that background uh, blog post. 
uh, Aaron and I got together last uh, Jan or this past January and really uh, set down um, the overarching vision for um, for source. And I think the one of the key parts of it is actually these uh, these six post-it notes, uh, which we kind of dis described as the ground rules for source. Um, and so I'll just uh, I'll take each one really fast. Uh, bias toward open. That means that uh, we want this to be about sharing information. We want this to be uh, not just about hyping the cool thing you did, but about helping people uh, do that as well. Um, not creating community. What that means is uh, this is a fail if we're if we're walking in and saying now we're going to build your community for you. Uh, this is a this is a site that is is deeply rooted and deeply indebted to the community that it's for. Uh, build for doers. This is not a, a site that's just about uh, articles about cool new things. It's about really helping people make those things happen. Uh, stay away from here's the thing. Uh, we want to uh, make sure that this is, uh, this is not simply show and tell, that this is uh, show and do. Um, context opens closed systems. This one's actually really important. Um, Sometimes when we document code, uh, we are doing exactly that. We're saying this is how this code works. And um, it's, even if it's open code, uh, it stays a relatively closed system because if you don't understand the context that that code was written and the reasons and motivation behind why it was implemented, uh, you don't totally understand the code. So we really wanted to do that. Um, not a repo. When we started thinking about the code index, uh, the key third rail was there's no way in hell we're replicating uh, GitHub. Instead, we want to work with it. So it's an index to uh, existing repos. We're not asking anyone to move anything anywhere. Uh, links moving forward, what that means is uh, we're not interested in keeping people locked inside source. We want to move people out to the stuff that's important. No Elks Club means uh, we do need to be cognizant of the fact that conversations, uh, especially for for small communities can be very exclusive. And so we're not building something exclusive. We're building something that wants to bring people in. And similar to that is unassociation. This isn't a trade org. This is something much more awesome. Um, so those are, uh, those are the, the ground rules there. Um, the next uh, question there is the link to the GitHub code work is fantastic. Is this custom or are you using a library slash other solution for this? Uh, Ryan, are you on the call? By chance, star seven to unmute if you are. Yeah, I am. I'm not sure. Did I just unmute yeah. correctly? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the various ways we're pulling GitHub in? Sure. Um, well, the, the first way, uh, of course, is just via the, the straight GitHub API so we can get up to date information about you know, number of forks, number of watchers, um, things like that. So every time you load the page, it, it's going to go out and, and, and fetch that stuff. Um, but I think the, the question you just described was talking about the little repo browser. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a cool little JavaScript library, and I believe it's just called repo.js. And I'll, uh, yeah, there it is. I'll, I'll post a, a link here um, in the Etherpad chat. Um, but we're just using that. It makes it really easy to uh, pass it a, a, a GitHub uh, repo URL, and it it calls in that nice little browser. We customized a few things so that it used the font awesome icons and um, you know kind of matched the, the look a little bit better of, of what we were doing with Source. Uh, but yeah, that's how it works. It was it was pretty like a, a nice nice find for sure. Yep. Uh, are there any other? Uh, th thanks, Ryan, and thanks for for all your hard work, including Ryan's on the West Coast, so he was uh, he was helping figure out what was wrong with the server at an ungodly hour this morning. Um, uh, any other questions right now? Awesome. Well, sources is, is ongoing. There'll be new content coming uh, e probably even today, and uh, and regularly follow on Twitter. Uh, follow the RSS feed, which will actually be linked up. Um, uh, uh, which will be linked up on the uh, Mozilla Open News site uh, very brief, very shortly from now. And uh, I see some people are asking for a little bit of clarity on, on these uh, ground rules. I'll go ahead and type those into the Etherpad instead of running through them again because I know we have other things to talk about on this call. But thanks, everyone. And uh, I think most of Team Source is going to go collapse in a heap now. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Thanks, Jack. Congrats.
Huge shout out for the source team. Uh, let's push ahead. Line 320, Jess and Carla. You want badges? How about damn badges? That was almost like a Boston accent, but not quite. Like, how about them badges? <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, oh, badges. I just feel I wanted to give a shout out really to Chris Appleton who is on PTO, but um, everyone send good vibes over to Australia where he is um, PTOing right now because he um, released the, the first batch of, of the look and feel for the badges that we're going to be releasing in conjunction with um, the badges in Thimble, Thimble for MoseFest. So if you look at line 324, you can um, take a look at, at them. And as we talked about on the last call, we're really trying to follow a modular formula for um, putting together each badge so that really it's not like we are designing, starting from scratch each time we have to do a badge, but we're really developing out a system um, so, that, um, so that it's easy to replicate. And, and we know we're going to be doing a lot of these in the future, so we wanted to um, kind of start off as simply as possible. Um, and so we're going to test these out. Um, and if you look on line 322, you can see what they're going to look like in Symbol. Just a mock-up right now, but we'll be implementing in the next few days. Um, and I asked Carla if she can speak a little bit just for some context about what these badges are going to actually represent in terms of this first release. Sure. So uh, just to give everybody an idea too, this is our first iteration of these badges, and we anticipate that there might be some shifts after um, after MozFest, but again, Chris did some great work and Jess is doing some great work as well. So thanks so much to them. But to give you an understanding, a lot of these that you're looking at are essentially what we call mini skills badges. So they're kind of the atomic level of what you need to do in order to understand um, HTML or CSS. And I know that there were some questions already like, how can I get this badge? And I can tell you, you can get a lot of these badges through Symbol at MozFest. <laughs> And by attending some of the uh, sessions that are addressing some of the both MozFest projects, sorry, both uh, WebMaker projects and also WebMaker badges. So I'll just kind of go through a few. Somebody asked about the Code Whisperer. That's actually when people are starting to um, learn how to code, they don't necessarily always put comments in their code. So that's actually to encourage them to comment their code so that they know what they're doing when they come back to it later. And again, I'd, I'd also like to um, give a shout out to Chloe. Um, for a lot of the work that she did on coming up with these ideas and, and building them out in kind of the, for the other previous iterations of badges. Um, and so there's been a, a large team effort on this. And then also just uh, some others, obviously. Um, the hyperlinker, obviously, at that one is kind of indicating that you know how to create links within Thimble. Um, Super Styler, those are CSS badges. Then at MozFest, um, we are also having some participation badges. And, uh, and also the publishing slash platform that Chris has on that same image. There is a Thimble badge that you get when you publish a Thimble project and a popcorn badge that you get when you publish a popcorn project. And all of these from the pub publishing platform up to the top uh, are all embedded assessments. So that actually occurs within the function of Thimble or popcorn. <coughs> Primarily Thimble. Um, popcorn, we're going to be aiming to have badges in early January, mid-January. Um, but the other ones, the MozFest participation badges from there down, those are all something that are be essentially peer assessed. So they only happen at MozFest. So that's the only ways to get those badges are either um, being a participant at MozFest, and I actually think that's the MozFest participant badge, believe it or not. <laughs> And um, also uh, the WebMaker Badgeifier one is if you attend the WebMaker Badges session and you help build out some badges, you can get you can get that earn that badge. And the Open Badgeifier are kind of a similar thing. If you attend the Open Badges session and you um, do some nice work there, uh, the person who's running that session can also award you that badge. The Hacktivator badge is intended towards the Hacktivator area within MozFest, so aiming primarily at educators, teachers, instructors however anybody self-identifies in that area. And then the community motivator one is what one that Michelle Thorne brought up that we thought was really important, which was essentially when, when you're at MozFest and someone's helping you out or doing some really great work, um, and you'd like to acknowledge that, you would be able to issue this badge at MozFest. So it's kind of a brief, brief overview of, um, so somebody asked essentially, are you actually making real physical patches? And I'm going to pause on that question and let Jess answer that. 
Um, not for most of us as far as I've been told, um, although you know, daily we're learning new and new things that can be designed. Um, but I, we actually had talked about it in the future, and I know that um, MoCo, who is also um, making their own set of badges, are, also, are interested in making physical patches, so it's definitely something we could talk about. Um, is there interest? Plus one if you are interested in it. Um, and then I think there's also another question of like how can I display my badges I earn at MozFest. So um, you'll be able to display those, believe it or not, through your open badge backpack. Um, and that's something that we are um, in the process of putting together. So WebMaker badges are um, the application. So they're, they're a version of the open badges using the open badge infrastructure and that platform. And um, open badger is being created for the webmaker badges. And so <coughs> they'll be, we'll be issuing it through that. So ultimately there are a lot of different projects coming together to make webmaker badges happen. And, um, and so just to give you uh, another overview is that essentially Thimble um, will be assessing whether or not uh, you did things correctly within um, that ASP that tool and then awarding you badges through that. Um, and then <clears throat> Popcorn will be awarding badges when you hit Publish. <clears throat> then also um, we'll be using the Open Badge infrastructure, and, uh, and there may be people floating around, and there may be other people um, with other platforms who will be able to issue badges directly there so you can create and issue badges. So there will be a variety of um, different badge issuing effects, and it will be a giant play test for us. So it will be interesting to, to hear how comfortable people are about getting their badges, what they think about them when they get them, whether or not they push them and make them public, um, and then will there be physical backpacks? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Um, <laughs> I would so say no to that one. <laughs> um, where, where, where can we start to start putting badges? Well, you should have the opportunity to, to make them, uh, put them on your blog, at this point, I don't know if we actually can push to Facebook yet, but we're getting there. Um, and then also, um, so essentially we're working on that aspect. So display is an aspect that we are focused on um, kind of in the next version of where we head with open badges. And I'm, I'm just actually going to pin that one for just a second only because uh, I think that there are a lot of questions that we're still trying to work out to get um, to MozFest. So our goal with open badges is not only to have people issue badges, but also to have displayers want to consume these badges. So the end point for WebMaker badges is, um, and again, this is the first iteration as just mentioned, and we will have many, many more badges coming within the first quarter. So some of what we're working on at MozFest is developing out specific kinds of badges and what's next in the whole WebMaker badge universe. But the end goal for WebMaker badges is to start having people be hired, right? Or have it be recognized by higher ed in some way so that people, it becomes a true social economy and that the badges become um, kind of its own sense of currency. Very cool. Yep. Thanks. So I'm just looking uh, at some of the other questions. Yeah, maybe um, we can, you can just carry on. Uh, with, with question and answer in the in the pad, sure. Is that cool? And we'll push ahead. We've got yep. eight minutes left. Um, but thanks, thanks, Carla and Jess. Great presentation. Very exciting stuff. Um, so, Laura, you wanted to talk really quickly about uh, our collaboration with the National Day of Writing. Yes. Can you hear me, or am I double yes. muted? Yes, we can. I'm not. Okay. Um, so Saturday, the 20th of October, is the National Day of Writing, and the Hive Learning Network NYC is collaborating along with such awesome institutions and organizations as the New York Times and Edutopia, a um, couple of different universities and colleges, Common Sense Media, a bunch of different academic organizations. Um, we were asked to collaborate by the National Writing Project because they're pretty keen on the Mozilla discussions that we've been having around the idea of web literacies. And um, everybody can participate. It's really easy. Just this week, if you write something, tweet it out using the hashtag WhatIWrite. Um, and specifically on Friday, there will be a culmination of all of those twi uh, tw um, tweets um, to provide insight and excitement around writing and online writing, and by extension, having the skills to participate in the online exchange of knowledge and information. So that was my 90 seconds. If you have any questions or want to know more, I'm going to be um, emailing the WebMaker list later today. 
um, with some more information on that, but you can also just ask me. Cool. Thanks, Carla. And I guess, I guess our, our goal here is just to kind of include digital literacy with this kind of broader writing and, and literacy work. Is that, is that basically it? Yes, exactly. We're just participating in the conversation. And this is pretty important from the educator community side of things because this shows educators that Mozilla is participating in academic conversations. Um, it's, does it, it's just a small way to show that. So. Very cool. All right, well, let's push ahead to line 372. Chloe, game on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. So a um, round of applause for the launch master who yet launched another website today, which is the Game On competition website. Um, so for, you, for those of you wondering what is Game On, it's a competition. Um, Mozilla is inviting you to imagine how next generation web technologies can revolutionize the way we play and make games on the web. And we're opening the competition uh, for submissions on December 3rd. Uh, but meanwhile, we have a microsite up, um, and uh, we are announcing it also officially at MozFest, and we're, doing, we're uh, doing some awesome recruitment, actually, of judges and prizes that we are also announcing during MozFest. And uh, the idea is that we're inviting um, people that are 14 and older to make uh, browser-based mobile games, hackable games, and games for learning, and uh, use, use the power of the web to really invent you know, new game mechanics and, and think um, of, of powerful and innovative new ways to, to make uh, games for the browser. And uh, so awesome. There is a new site. You guys can check it out. Uh, there is even more background in blog formats. You guys can also check that out on line 390. Um, there is some lovely soundtrack there and an animated GIF love especially for Chris uh, McAvoy. And you know, you saw this and you're like, oh my god, I want to tweet this out. There's a link for you um, and some suggested uh, hashtags and Twitter handles. And I just wanted to give a special thanks to, of course, the Lunch Master, but also to Ben Moskovich and Open Mad and Ryan and Chris Appledon for, for really pitching in and making this a fast and furious launch. So we will be following up with more info on the competition, but just wanted to put this out there and answer any questions you guys might have. And uh, anything else? Very cool. Thanks, Chloe. Um, I'm just looking at your blog. Anybody have questions for Chloe? Do the games have to be one of those three categories, Chloe? Do they have to be mobile, hackable, or learning-based? So no, we're we're open. We're having an open-ended. We're kind of suggested those. We're suggested those three categories. And what we will do when we have our full-fledged site is that we will have you know a list of awards that are kind of more general, um, and then some special awards around those three categories to really encourage people to build those um, those types of games, since those are also like um, games that we are interested in as as the, as foundation as Mozilla Foundation in seeing and as Mozilla in general. So yes, short answer, it's open. These are suggestions only. Sweet. We've got three minutes left. Uh, Jacob and Chris Lawrence, do you have a quick report back from the NYC Digital Wave Festival? Hello, it's Jacob. Hello. Hey. Hey. Um, yeah, I guess it can be nonverbal. I put everything up in there. Um, it was really fun. Um, we had a lot of really great youth uh, reporters um, playing with popcorn, and um, when the hour was up, I wanted to stop working, so that was a really good time. Um, but yeah, so the, I put the, the project basically, um, and also um, a great popcorn version of the Stop and First story that was made by Radio Rookies is up there, um, starting on line 414. Um, so yeah, check it out. I don't want to take up too much time because I also have some stuff about popcorn to share. This is Chris, very cool. uh, Lawrence. Oh, Real hey, quick, Chris. I just want to add a little bit of context. Um, Digital Waves is a youth reporting and, and media production uh, festival that's run by one of our Hive members, uh, WMYC's Radio Rookies, who are very uh, web maker hacktivated, so to speak, and we're at last year's MozFest, and we'll be there again this year. 
um, and have been really helping and thinking with the popcorn team. So um, it was really great to see popcorn sort of folded into this larger festival about um, nonfiction media making with, with teens and, and educators and, and media producers. So, um, and so we got some great stuff as Jacob highlighted, but uh, that's, that was the context that it was in. Very cool. Thanks, Chris. Let me have a quick look at the pad here. I think that takes us to the end of the agenda. Perfect timing. Uh, some nonverbal updates under line 440, including uh, a really helpful FAQ around Popcorn Maker from Brett. Uh, thanks for that, Brett. Uh, sounds like they've had some good success with some early um, QA testing. Uh, there's an item in line 47. I encourage you to check it out. White House Education Data Palooza. And just a reminder that uh, you have four days left to submit a proposal for the uh, Mozilla and iBeam Open Art uh, Fellowship stuff. There's a link for that under line 497. Cool. Well, thanks for a great call, everybody. Action packed week. We'll talk to you all next week. Take care. Bye, everybody. Rebecca, still there? Are you muted? You might be muted. Hey, Matt. Hey, how's it going? Cool. Are we, have we stopped recording? Yep. Rad. Okay. So, while we go through from the off of the pad and just schedule stuff in. Let me just pull up the Etherpad here. Cool. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to um, get, uh, as we discussed with giving Chloe the um, the Tumblr inside track. I'm going to just give that to Jacob to get some of this cool popcorn stuff on the Tumblr. Yeah, that's right. a great idea. Um, and it, it, if, if you have um, documentation like that, Rebecca, that's kind of sensitive, like that we that we don't uh, want the world to have access to because it, it includes like logins and credentials and stuff, you can create a wiki page on the LDAP protected like foundation wiki. Let me just pull oh, up that. Cause that, that would be good to know. Yeah, that's How to probably do that. useful. Um, we could so probably, uh, if you can drop that onto the communications pad. Um, I was tempted to just sort of put up a, a wiki of uh, Tumblr post types that we could also repurpose for the, um, the Ravensborn kids. Yep. No, I think, I think, uh, Maybe if we have both. Like, so one is if you create, like, I just IRC'd you the link to the foundation wiki. So you yeah. can just, like, create a page there, like, slash, um, slash Tumblr or slash whatever. And then just, like, you can, you know, it's LDAP password protected. So, so you, can, you can include the credentials there. Um, and then we can, you know, share it with, with people that we want to give the, hand the keys to, like Dan and Chloe and others. All right. Okay. Ruby, thank you. Cool. So let's see. We just start from line 105. I think we've already got the Mozfest tweak need scheduled for the next couple days. Uh, we already tweeted the one about how we're almost full, right? Uh, I believe so, that one, and whatever was on for today is already locked and loaded. Okay, cool. Well, let me just see if there's anything that came out of this specifically. Um, 
So I guess the main thing is just uh, the big push on teachers and youth. Um, so we, what do we already have scheduled for that? So we've got in line 67 of the tweet pad, we've already got that. Oh, are you in there? I'm uh, um, just heading over now. Oh, no problem. So I guess that was the main thing that came out. It's just like we need want to use our social media channels to really push educators and youth this week. Okay. Um, um, so for t tomorrow, we've already got in line 67, we've got that care about digital literacy bit, uh, which is good. Um, oh, that's actually today's locked and loaded list. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong day. Oh, that's okay. Um, that's great. We check in with Ben, um, I don't have his story about uh, the winner, the current winner. We only have a few more. We have like two days left to push this contest, so uh -huh. it would be nice to have that today. <laughs> okay. Ben. Not that like we're pu we're pushing the reg, but. It would be nice to have that kind of somebody did win piece. <laughs> okay, I just reminded him to add that link. Um, so I think, I think maybe on October 17th uh, we do a tweet focus on youth. Well, I guess when I say tweet, I mean like I mean I, I all pretty much all of this stuff is just like can be multi-purpose for for Facebook at the same time, right? Is that is that working out for you? Um, well, that's the way I'm sort of looking at this channel um, right now. It's just sort of I'm trying to I'm trying to stick with like product level, Mozfest level stuff. Um, it, it is definitely all pretty much going to Facebook as well. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. You know, some of the things that that I've noticed actually last night, I noticed that the Ravensbourne kids seem to have signed themselves up for at Moz Kids, at Moz Stories, at Moz Games. They've got a Facebook page called at Moz Kids. Um, I don't think that we're running these kids. Like, I don't think that we have anything. Like, I don't think we've tasked them with setting up all these communication channels for all yeah. this stuff. Um, That's okay. We just, might just, just want to drop drop in on them and ask them to carry some of that info. Invite their buddies. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we can just add those, like, you know, add those those uh, like tags at the end of our post, or just like if we if we have something that we think is is relevant and we want them to retweet, we can just like put like at Moz Kids at the end of end of it or whatever. Seriously, but I know what you yeah. mean. Like I it, it, they, they, they <laughs> I think we just have to kind of uh, you know be comfortable with the fact that they're just going to kind of run wild. And you know sometimes they do stuff, frankly, with like branding, like using our logos and stuff. <laughs> it makes me a little <laughs> that kind of gives me pause. But I think we just have to like you know let it go and just let them oh, let them be have, enthusiastic and run wild. Yeah, like I have no desire to stop them. I just like us to check in with them and be like, "Hey, we see you're doing this. This is cool. Can we support or guide you?" Yep. Um and, you know, they I I love the raw enthusiasm. Um in fact, I just suggest we task them with stuff. Um and I haven't connected with these guys yet. I was hoping to be a little bit further ahead with our press kit. Um but uh, we can talk about that after. When you say press kit, you mean the storytelling kit? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Having a hard time letting go of that description. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's just that we have a whole separate deliverable that uh, called the press kit. So anyway, that's fine. Um, so anyway, so let's just make sure that we have like you know one status update per day that's focused on. Um, youth and educators. So October so for today we're good. For tomorrow maybe we do something specifically focused on youth. 
Um, maybe we can actually kind of tweak this one that's already in there in line 80, 82 to make it more focused on youth. Um, uh, and then we've got one focused on educators in line 91 for tomorrow. Um, oh, final dead contest appeal on the 18th. Because um. I think they're picking the winner to, on the 20th. And that's it. So I think we said that we would do two, two tweets on the, um, the Writer's Day thing. Uh, link to articles. So the 18th. Uh, this is um, this is from Laura. So it's the stuff. Yeah. So I, so okay. we'll do a tweet on the 19th because that's like the the day that that is actual National Writers Day, and then uh, right. And then I I think what that actually is. Um, line 92 is kind of an interesting list of articles for, for educators. Like there's content in there that this, this target audience would want to read. Um, okay. The ed, it's actually the ed tech primer list of articles in progress. For um, does it, make, does it make sense to try wedging in Hacktivate learning all over the place? with anything to do with ed tech? Yeah. Um, yep. Okay. Hacktivate. I just, I like to sort of, don't want to drop the thread on some of these things we're trying to that's, push. No, that's great. Um, so I need to clean that up. But I, I guess I'll, I'll just try to, uh, the point I was just trying to make in line 89 is there's actually some some interesting content in that link in line 92, like a history yeah. of educational technology and all that kind of stuff. So if we can include that link plus uh, plus plus a, a registration CTA. Okay. And then. Cool. I think that means that we need to clean it up. I think we now have a, a, a status update for each day of this week around youth or educators. Cool. So let's just have a look at the other, the rest of the stuff in the pad. I guess the main thing is. So I guess part of what I just wanted to uh, flag, Rebecca, is uh, I think this question around like just making sure that we have clear documentation around like what happens when registration is full and can I buy tickets at the door and how does that stuff work? Like I think that's that's going to be on Michelle Thorne's plate to like make sure that we have clear answers to those questions. Um, okay. But uh, once once you know once that's done, uh, you and I will um, you know have to make sure that we're you know, familiar with what the answers are and driving people to the right places and answers. Cause I, I think we're going to get that question a, a lot in, in, the, in the weeks before the festival. Definitely. Cool. Um, so actually in line 177, um, I wanted to, this is kind of unrelated to the status update stuff, Rebecca, but I wanted to ask if you had an opinion about this. 
which is there's really, I guess, three, three things. Like for me is um, like when, when Mark talks about the importance of telling the story of those, those various tracks, so I guess it's like for me, like where where do I go? Like if I want to uh -huh. see the hackable game story, where do I go? Um, how do I get there? Like uh, is there a path off the festival front page or off the schedule pages or like what's the path that people uh, get get to that page? Um, and like what's the content. So I think that in terms of like where do I go? Does that make does that make sense this question? Yeah. I mean right now we've got those just that giant flipping field of blue squares and they each have a tiny little title below them which is a theme name. And that's that that's where the track starts and really all you get is a listing is a page that sort of shows you all the sessions underneath um, underneath that theme umbrella. What yeah. we could really use probably is a paragraph for each theme, like really richly fleshed out. And we could also use paragraphs on all the audiences that we're trying to, to get together, which is sort of what I was trying to talk about when I said I'm having a roadblock. It's like, yeah. you know, I don't know that I'm the guy to write that. Um, that's okay, but that's like the yeah. right, exactly the right question to ask. So, um, I think you're right. We need a paragraph um, explaining like, like with context and specifically outcomes. Yeah. Like what are the outcomes we're looking for? Um, and, how, and how it all ties into WebMaker. Like how WebMaker owns this right now. Like what, what, what it is that makes it WebMaker yeah, related. Yeah, that's great. So in terms of so I think we're saying uh, that in terms of where do I go, like you go where we're already sending people, which is those theme pages and the schedule. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then um, so the other, the other question I've asked is um, can we pull – uh, like if you have a look at one of those theme pages, like in line uh, 180, uh, a question I've asked the web dev team is, can we pull um, tagged posts from the from the blog into that right hand block? That's you know a good I mean? question. Yeah. Um, I, I think, but it's, is it the right proposal? Like I think it's, I think that if you know if at one of these theme landing pages, A, you had a piece of art, like Chris has made these icons, so just like a bit of art at the top that makes it feel more like a landing page, like maybe just a photo plus one of Chris's icons, um, you know, plus a bit of copy that describes the context, the outcomes we're looking for, and the tie-in with WebMaker, as number two, and then thirdly, like pulling uh, relevantly tagged posts from the blog um, into the right hand column of the page. Like I think that would go a pretty long way towards like telling a, telling the story. Okay. Um, I can put a bug in motion um, on the question of sidebar. And thank you for helping me really clarify like what bugs we're actually looking for and giving that me that direction because on on a certain level, just the idea that that I should just change things on the website outright because I think it will be a good idea. <laughs> Not something I really would want to do alone. <laughs> and uh, I was getting a little scared that uh, Mark was thinking that we weren't making enough progress on all these goals. And I was a little nervous seeing as how I'm bogged down so much with just the session production. So that's great. Are there relevant blog posts and who are writing them? As far as I know, there's well, only like three blog posts. Yeah, yeah, now. But uh, I mean, the whole the whole point of the taxonomy work that we've been pushing on is um, that 
you know, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be posting a ton of content. Like I think okay. part of our job at the festival would be like looking for relevant content and artifacts and then, you know, posting to the festival blog and then making sure that they're tagged properly so that um, by track. So that those, okay. you know, so that those eight tracks like have um, a, a narrative for each of them. Okay. Does that make sense? And will people, yeah, will be, will people be contributing to this website? Here's sort of a question that I have as far as like content and stuff. So yeah, um, I mean, to me, that's what this, that's that's part of what this like the storyteller package, you know, ne needs needs to do is like clear documentation for how do I post to the festival blog? How do I contribute, or not, sorry, not how do I post to it, like how do I make a contribution to the festival blog? How do I contribute uh, a tweet? How do I contribute to the Webmaker Tumblr? Like so that's what we, you know, when, when we get there, it's okay that we're not there yet because there's so, so much else on, but you know, we need clear documentation for that. Yeah, we re we really have to. Um, we really, yeah. No, this isn't a useful comment, but I'll make it anyways. We really have to find a way to unify our efforts. Like, I had just landed on using Lanyard, but Lanyard can't be imported into the blog. <sighs> I don't know what to do now. No, it's okay. Rebecca, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> and it's not all on your shoulders. Like take take no, a don't. take a take a step back. You got a shout out from Mark today. I hope you heard that and, and Oh yeah. No, I didn't so, like, crazy. We're, we're okay, we're doing okay. We're in good shape. But just like um like let's tackle it this way. And you don't actually have to file a bug. So I've already in line hundred and ninety um I've Filed the bug around just like asking the question. Um, okay. Can we can we pull uh, can we pull tagged posts onto those pages? Um, and Mozfest is being tracked. Like bugs are for Mozfest are in Lighthouse, right? Well. They should be in a Santa, and I, 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 I don't know. Like, I'll be honest. Like, I just feel like there's still a lack of clarity around which bugs get filed in the Santa and which ones get filed in Lighthouse. I really, I wouldn't worry about it too much right now because once I get a, the answer to that question, um, I'm going to produce a mock-up. Okay. Um, and I, I think at the end of the day. So don't don't worry about this yet. I just wanted to mostly I just wanted to get your opinion on it. And it sounds like we're on the same page. It's like we basically feel like if I want to know what the story is for each of those tracks, where do I go? The short answer is you go to the scheduled theme pages. What we need to make those pages tell a better story is uh, A copy, B art, and C uh, post from the blog. Um, and I can sort of produce, take the lead on producing that mock-up. Cool. Um, and I, I can cover finding decent photographs for um, these theme pages. Um, and as I said, I could just use a hand on, on that paragraph for this okay. theme. Um, yep. If you want to, we can work on it together. But um, yeah, something I think that's probably the most immediate and most uh, tangible change that, that we can do and that will probably please Mark and I can do that on my own as well. So we won't need any we don't need to wait for any dev guys to help us. Okay. Um, oh I see what you mean. So the, yeah. the, the the copy stuff we can actually the copy and art stuff we we can basically do ourselves is what you're saying. 100%. Yeah. It, okay. it, it it would be really easy to drop in if we have it. Uh, where I get locked in is it, it took me an awful lot of sort of hemming and hawing just to do that you're invited section on the front page. Um, and then and then when Ryan saw that, he was like, "Well, where's devs? Where's filmmakers? Where's everything else?" And I was like, "Well, actually, I don't really know what we're trying to do with all of these groups. I mean, I do." But <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, I don't know, Rebecca. I think that it's, you know, unless you get a um, bug with a specific request to make updates to the front page, I, you know, I, I would try to just leave it. Like, you know, what we heard from Mark today is, hey, the two big groups that we need to focus on are educators and youth. And hey, yeah. guess what? They're already on the front page. So luckily, I mean, those are the ones I didn't get up. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. you know, I would say I, I don't know that making a million tweaks to the front page is the number one priority, especially since the entire front page is going to change once we flip over to like you know the, like festival on mode. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't I don't know that you really need to make I I, I would deprioritize tweaks to the front page at this point. Well. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think I'll just argue that back now that we don't really need that to drive registration and that the things that they asked for as of today are already up. So I don't yep. really need to kill myself to get the other pieces. Um, but then on the flip side, we have some, we have a little bit of text that that covers who the audiences are, and I think we we could still use just a little bit of boilerplate on audiences for audio, video on the web, and stuff like that. I feel like the more definition that we provide, the yep. happier Ryan and Mark are going to be. Yep, I agree. Let's do it on the track pages. Yes. And we can you know, multi-purpose it, but you're right. I mean, that's what Mark was, I think, was really pushing for, is like, you know, just greater clarity around each of those, each of those tracks. And you're right. So, you know, um, we should actually add that under line 182 um, audiences, like you know, who should come. Yeah, I, I'm. I'll, I'll say that that's the pretty much the number one thing I'm I'm wrestling with um, as far as uh, direction from Mark and Ryan. They want they want that content. Like you've just defined it a lot more clearly than I've been able to, but um, that's what they want. Okay. So, Rob, so can you, as a strategy, um, like put that work on others? Like, happily. Uh, so, so you know, it's, and just CC me. But the email can be, or you can even send it to me in advance if you want, if you're, if you want uh, feedback on it. But it's like really basic as like, hey, like pursuant to Mark's comment in, to, in today's webmaker call about really making sure we have a clear story for, you know, each track. You know, hey, Chris Lawrence is somebody who I know is like helping to lead the Hacktivate learning track. You know, here's what we have so far. Here's what we think is needed, and we're areas where I could use your help. Um, you know, can can you send this back to me by, you know, whatever end of week? Okay. Um, how about this? How about I draft that for you and you send it out? I am not getting good responses. Okay. Still. Yep. So that sounds I'll great. That. So, that's cool. So I feel like we have better clarity between us now around like how we're going to tell the story for each of those tracks. Right? Like the short answer is on the festival blog and on the theme landing pages. Yeah. And the only other wrinkle I'll throw into it is is um, like in addition to so say for hackable games like that that URL in line 181. Um, oh, maybe we also need shit. We also need links. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Uh, so just bear with me for one second, Rebecca. So the main place you're going to go is to those theme pages, but there's also some secondary pages, right? Which we don't necessarily want to confuse people with, but just they're in the mix. So one of them is the if we take hackable games as an example, mm -hmm. we'll also have um, a category like link from the blog, like MozillaFestival.org slash blog slash hackable games, right? Right. And in addition, we'll have we'll have Tumblr. And uh, Twitter hashtag. So 
So I guess it's just worth thinking about how we tie those things in. So the category feed on the on the on the blog will basically be taken care of. Like if we can surface tag posts from there with a link, um, then that should take care of that. The Tumblr stuff is like maybe we just like, you know, maybe we should just include a link to the tag Tumblr URL. Um, and the other thing we should do is make sure that the Twitter hashtag for that track is prominently displayed. It doesn't have to be embedded or anybody it can just be like a link or just like letting people know in that page like, hey, if you're interested participating in the Hackable Games track, you should be tweeting at hash Hackable Games or whatever it is. Okay. That's, you know what, what we're describing right now, the paragraph um, that, that basically the description of the track which uh -huh. is a good way to describe it. That's what I wanted to be publishing on Tumblr anyways. Like that's essentially it. What are cool. hackable games? What are we doing with hackable games? How does it fit into WebMaker pretty picture post? And then a yep. link back to the festival site. So it's sort yep. of difficult. Exactly. So we can assume that um, like once we're at the festival, like we're going to be generating a ton of access artifacts around hackable games. Chloe is going to be posting stuff on, on Tumblr. People will be tweeting out stuff that we'll be retweeting. We'll probably try to do roundup posts or even like assign some of our storytelling volunteers to beats. Like, mm -hmm. hey, like, hey, Ravensborn kids, like, we want you three to really own the hackable game stream. Like, here's how you submit posts to the festival blog. Um, here's how you submit to Tumblr, blah, blah, blah. But I think this kind of basic strategy is how we're going to um, try to bring order to chaos. If you want to see the Hackable Game story, here's where you go. That one page has clear copy around the context, outcomes, how it fits with WebMaker and the audiences are participating. It includes the most relevant posts from the festival blog, which is basically our best of content. Um, and it includes links through to stuff like, to secondary content like, you know, the hashtag, the tag Tumblr posts, et cetera. Okay, so I'm back at the aggregation of content piece. Mm -hmm. I had sort of figured that we would use Lanyard and each session would be the place where they've got, uh, they've got that segment called coverage, right? So you attend the okay. session and, you, and the idea that I was like, well, it's already there, so let's get people to submit every piece of granular content. Here's the project I made at this session. Here's the thing that I did at this session. Um, unfortunately, what I'm really beginning to realize now is that if we're going to make the WordPress festival site um, the go-to place, does it work for us to have all of the submissions on Lanyard in subsessions? Yeah, Especially I think it does because I think it does because um, it's a good point though that those Lanyard links, like the fact that um, like part of what the copy on the page needs to make clear is where do I find like session notes and artifacts. So we need, we, need to, we need to make sure that's documented on the page. But I mean, the good news there is that because we're doing a lanyard, if you click on one of those, um, hey John, do you need this room? Do you need this room? Yes, do. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, can I, um, can I call you back? Sure. I just got to relocate. I'll just stay on here. Uh, I'll just ping you in Skype. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Please stand by.